Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, police call Reiner's death murder. Body found in Vicinda Nasino identified. And PM well despite fake social media news. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Police are calling it murder and the death of a 22-year-old woman whose body was found in bushes along Monica Road in Suva. Raina Prasad of Old Namara Settlement in Kalsa Road was reported missing by her father on Saturday. Her body was discovered by a farmer on his way to his plantation on Monday morning. Pranita Prakash reports. Police Chief of Operations, ICP Maritinong Yelebu, says a team has been set up solely to investigate the death of 22-year-old tertiary student, Raina Prasad. The, uh, the post-mortem has been uh, carried out uh, already by our pathologist. Um, the body is uh, decomposed. So uh, right now, um, I would like to assure the, uh, the relatives okay, that uh, we are doing our part in the investigations. Our investigation team is working around the clock okay, to uh, investigate the case thoroughly. ICP Ngyolebu confirms a phone was found beside the body. Her family had earlier confirmed that they were trying to get in touch with her on Saturday, but their calls didn't go through. Meanwhile, an eyewitness, Rusate Waviri, who works at a construction site near to the crime scene, says the body was discovered just after 7 a.m. on Monday morning. I came here to work at around half past seven. I was just about to open the container at work when the guy that comes the, down here, he ran up screaming. He told me, there's a body down there, there's a body. I just took a walk down like this. When I saw the body lying on the, beside the, where it was found, it was lying there. So, same time I called the police and then they came in half an hour later. Waviri says tire marks were also visible at the crime scene. And there were, there were tire marks right to where the body was laying. It looked like the body was dumped there. Meanwhile, Prasad's neighbors who refused to come on camera say they saw her alive on Friday evening while some saw her on Saturday morning. She was last seen going to a canteen in Tamafua. What happened to her between then and the time her body was found along Monica Road remains a mystery. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The finding of a fourth body in a creek near Vicinda over the last nine years cannot be labelled as indicating a trend. Vicinda has several hundred residents residing in hard homes and government housing blocks. Police say it is rather unfortunate that this has happened in Vicinda so many times, but they are adamant that the settlement is a safe place. Rachel Nath with the details. Following the discovery of the body of 36-year-old security officer Sekio Randolo in a creek on Christmas morning, residents who spoke to FBC News say they worried about their safety. We are scared now because every day our kids, they bath in this creek. As soon as the rain finish, our kids are holding in the water. But now we are scared to leave our kids in the water. But the children, they use the water most of the time. They, you know, during this summer period, they come and have their bath here. But this is the first time for us to notice uh, something like this. is uh, very, very, you know, according to children's health. Eh? Police claim there is nothing to be alarmed about. We cannot uh, connect all of them, you know, to say that uh, there is a common trend or somebody doing it. Eh? But uh, it just happened. Eh? Unfortunately, four or five bodies happen. I mean, it happened at Vecina for in, in recent years. Eh? So uh, I can say that yes, unfortunately, uh, Vecina seems to be the place. Eh? But it does not mean that Vecina is an unsafe place. Eh? Currently, South Division crime officers have been tasked to ascertain Randola's last movements and find out how he ended up in the creek. Rachel Nath, FBC News.
Fiji-born U.S. police officer Raniel Singh was murdered while on duty in the U.S. state of California this morning. Singh was conducting a vehicle stop at an intersection when he was shot. He radioed for help and by the time officers arrived at the scene, the suspect had fled and they found Singh suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. The 33-year-old was transported to a local hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. Singh had served with the Newman Police Department for seven years and had previously worked with two other police departments in the U.S. He was living the American dream, I'll put it that way. He, he uh, immigrated here from the Fiji Islands, uh, just like my parents did, and uh, um, was definitely enjoying uh, the American dream, you know, went to the police academy, you know, got his dream job of being a peace off, uh, police officer, um, became a canine officer, um, loved camping, loved hunting, loved fishing, loved his family, you know, loved visiting them, you know, uh, back in Fiji, love having his family come over here. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama has been resting and is ready to lead the nation. Despite all lies spread on social media about his condition, Permanent Secretary to the Office of the Prime Minister Yogesh Karan says rumours circulating on social media are not true and people should not believe comments and posts on Facebook regarding Mbaini Marama. Karan says he cannot divulge whether PM was hospitalised or not, but says people need to respect the privacy of the PM. The Prime Minister was today seen at Flag Staff Plaza during lunchtime, proving posts of his ill health and death are false and spread by the us usual suspects. Every child of a one-year-old is counted as passengers aboard a ship and this is one of the issues which led up to recounting of passengers on board vessels in the past few days. Maritime Safety Authority Chief Executive Captain Philip Hill has confirmed two inter-island ferries were stopped from sailing last Friday due to overloading and the need to recount passengers was vital for safety. Savadathambo reports most of the shipping companies regarded children as free of charge. The Maritime Safety Authority has admitted the passengers may not have been aware of the one-child, one-passenger issue. However, Captain Phillips says the boat operators should have been. Uh, if there is an unlikely event of an incident, the child will be required to, to occupy a life jacket. And also, while on the ship, the child will occupy a seat space. So, um, for those who are taking children, to be mindful that the children that they take are counted as passengers if they are above one year old. This is clearly stipulated under the maritime legislation which came into effect in 2014. MCF highlighted this is one of the recent pressing issue. However, the board will go according to what is required. So in all of these conditions, MCF, uh, MCF must make sure that the ships are in order and at the same time that uh, that they meet all the conditions that they are for the legislation that there is no overloading and so forth. Shipping companies have been advised to be mindful of the number of children above one year old when selling tickets. Meanwhile, MSAF will also strengthen awareness of this in 2019. Savera Tambua, FBC News. Still to come, farmers want consumers to buy more goat meat. And PRB calls for year end rents. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, go in the cash on the wrong Nambula Fib, Nambandua and a serre. Oya was it size, a lambasa, and the teleton of a Roman and Bula Fem, Nambandua and a serre. We have the Tumeli, a Kona Tauno Hinatoka, Talitakin and a Varro and Bula Fem, Nambandua and a serre. Never go funny and a town of Singatoka, get on the Talitakan and Bula Fem, Nambandua and a serre. Bula Fem, Nambandua and a serre. The 42 Fijians living in Indonesia are safe following a tsunami that struck between the Java and Sumatra Islands on Saturday. The Fiji Embassy in Indonesia, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, has confirmed that no Fijians were affected by the tsunami that hit several areas, including beaches in Pandanglang Region C, Sarang and South Lampang. The embassy has been in contact with the Fijians residing there to offer advice in terms of their safety and has also continued to monitor the situation. 
The deadly tsunami in Indonesia was triggered by a chunk of the Anak Krakatau volcano slipping into the ocean. At least 373 people were killed and many buildings were heavily damaged when the tsunami struck. More farmers in the northern and western divisions are venturing into goat farming for commercial purpose. Goat meat is not only in demand during the festive season, but people are buying it year-round, which in turn has become a great source of income generating for more fa farmers. Koroi Tandalala reports. Satish Chand, who has been herding goats for seven years now, says while it is rewarding, it comes with many challenges. People should uh, do their own farming goat. Because every time they can't buy. Because the price goes up, they look for the cheaper price, can't find the cheaper price. Sometimes dog come and eat here. Oh, one time my big goat was stolen from the home. Nahin Ali, a goat farmer from Lotoka, says he began herding goats when he was 18 years old. Ali, who earned $5,000 in just two weeks during this festive season, is encouraging other families with land in the rural areas to take up goat farming. So far, I've sold 20 goats and I got $5,000 from it. Christmas and New Year is the best time for us. The goats are being sold between $150 to $300, and the farmer says the price are determined based on the sizes. Meanwhile, the Agriculture Ministry is working with many farmers to raise the standard of goat farming in the country. Gorey Tandulala, FBC News. $119,000 in rent is still owed to the Public Rental Board for this year. This involves 1,658 tenants, of whom 75% are on direct deductions and 25% make cash payments. The PRB aims to reduce the amount to 98000 before the year ends and is hoping tenants who have arrears will come forward and pay. The arrears make up about 3% of the $4 million total rental income. At the moment, it's uh, from say some uh, one week rent, uh, there is none owing us uh, over a thousand dollars. But I think the total is around 600 tenants from, from less than $10 up to maybe $800. There's a few with $800. With only three days left before 2019, the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation is in full gear prepara preparing for its New Year's Eve party. The Today FM 3112 annual New Year's party will welcome 2019 in style with heaps of entertainment for the entire family. Program Director Mario Fasala says this will also be the first party held at Suva's Alba Park since its refurbishment. Fasala says there will be rides, amusements and entertainment from local artists and dancers. The Today FM 3112 annual New Year's party starts at 6 p.m. on Monday. The party is actually alcohol free and it, like we've said it's always about the family and we want to celebrate New Year with family and friends and so it's an alcohol free party there'll be security and it's a great chance for you to just sit back relax and get 2018 you know out of the way and get ready for a new year altogether. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, Fiji Women's NRL hopes for a first gold medal in 2019 Pacific Games, but Rachel joins you now with business. Thanks Jackie, good evening and coming up after the break. FMF Foods to improve PNG and Melanesian markets. And in growing Fiji, Grace Road invests $2 million in shoe shop. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Jenny Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coracle, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Mariva. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic. In business tonight, FMF Foods Fiji Limited will be focusing on Papua New Guinea and Melanesian markets next year. Managing Director Ram Bajikal says businesses from these markets has not been satisfactory and they're working to improve it. The company plans to market its products to other Pacific Island countries. 
We're also looking at uh, Papua New Guinea in itself. I think there's been an announcement of some new projects there, so we expect that economy to pick up. And I think that will have a, a good ripple effect uh, all over the Pacific, and uh, we're hoping that we can gain from that as well. And we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. With investors returning from the Christmas break, major equity indexes started the day on a positive note, reflecting an appetite for risky assets. Markets will remain thin into the new year and will likely be dominated by political headlines ahead of the non-farm payrolls data from the U.S. at the start of January. The Aussie dollar has been recovering overnight as U.S. markets opened following Christmas Day as stocks and risk appetite bounce back supporting higher bets such as the Aussie. The Kiwi has drifted sideways in a quiet Asian session as traders drifted in back to their desk ahead of the weekend and New Year celebrations around the corner. That's it from HFC Bank for now. Binaka. Thanks, Anifa. On to the exchange rates. As it was set this morning, the world's foreign exchange markets are drifting during this holiday period after major shocks, market fluctuations in the past few days. Our dollar gain against the US dollar, the Kiwi, the Kina, the Euro and the Yen slipping against slightly against the Aussie and the Chinese Yuan. Looking at the commodity prices, it was up. Crude oil closed at $46 per barrel. Gold climbed almost $10 to close at $1,260. Nine an ounce and silver closed higher at fifteen zero six an ounce. And in Green Fiji tonight, the Grace Road Group of Companies has invested two million dollars to open a butter shop at Flagstaff Plaza in Suva. Sales manager Sophie Chai says they have brought the world-renowned brand to Suva with the aim of providing better footwear to everyone. Chai says they have opened an outlet in Nakasi as well and plan to have stores in the Western Division by end of July next year. She says they have products for males, females, and children. Actually, the batashes, all the, all the product is very like nice design and very unique design as well. It's so pretty and good for the like dress shoes. Also, the, we have like a company line. It's very comfortable for the like. It's very good for the food and good for the body line check as well. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Weber to continue scouting for new talent and Fiji Mbati to feature in the Oceania Shield. Details after the break. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka, Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Sonami Nasodi Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Singer Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Pritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. Fijiwe's National Sevens coach Gareth Weber says he will continue tracking local talent through the remainder of the World Seven Series. Weber also highlighted that while he is preparing his current squad for the 2020 Olympics, it will not lessen the need to scout for new players who can break into the squad. I'm always hopeful and I'm always aware that there's players out there that could potentially push through. At the moment, there's three or four, five, six of these guys that need to have my attention and, and pushed into those positions of pressure to see how they react. And if they react well, then obviously they continue to put pressure on to have those white jerseys. The Vodafone Fiji Mbati will compete in the Oceania Shield next year. The competition will feature Samoa, Papua New Guinea and Fiji battling for a spot in the 2020 Oceania Cup. Pacific Test matches that's going to take part in uh, July. Uh, so uh, we're still yet to be confirmed on who uh, Fiji Bati will play. Uh, it, the likelihood will be either Samoa or Papua New Guinea. FNRL chair Penny Musunamasi says the side will be boosted with the coming of a full time coach early next year. Our Fiji Bati coach coming in. And not only he's going to be based here in Fiji, he's going to take the team to the next World Cup. So he'll have a, better, a very better idea. Uh, of what we have here locally and, and that's one of the criteria that we would like 
the coach to come here is to recognize local talent. The Fiji Women's Rugby League side hopes to win its uh, first Pacific Games gold medal at the regional meet in Samoa next year. Coach Penny Tumbakimbao says the players have a positive attitude towards training in camp as they look to write their names in history come July. He adds the coaching staff is doing their best to ensure the players are well prepared for the games. Tumbakimbao names his final squad in April. Good chance to, to get the goal. Uh, I know it may seem impossible to, to some people given the, the competition uh, throughout the year, but I believe that uh, we can get something for Fiji. In top 14 rugby, tries from brothers Filippo Nakosi and Chosotu Isova helped Toulon to victory over Leon. Toulon's uh, a strong performance by Toulon saw them run in six tries to seal a 40-7 victory. Meli Tavanga reports. Filippo Nakosi was in fine form for Toulon as he scored three tries against Lyon. Susu Tisova, who is Nakusi's brother, then added another score in the 33rd minute to extend their lead. <laughs> Offload King Leone Nakarau and Virimi Vakatao scored a try each, as Racing 92 outclassed the Pignant 64-28. Apisai Nangale who contributed for Clermont as they played a 20-all draw against Toulouse. <laughs> Meanwhile, Clermont is leading the standings with 43 points, followed by Toulouse with 3 points behind, while Bodo Bagley rounded up top 5 with 34 points. Mel Tavanga, FBC Sports. Manchester City suffered its second successive defeat as it was beaten 2-1 at Leicester City this morning. In today's play of the day, Liverpool's first goal in their 4-0 win over Newcastle. A corner which was headed away went straight to Lovren just inside the penalty, who smashed the ball into the top corner of the net. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful. If one New Year's Eve isn't enough for you, we take a look at how to ring in 20, 2019 twice. Details coming up. My Navneet Nan, Nambualumbua se, jese Prenny North, mashur hai, waise Radio Fiji 2 bhi sabhi jaga mashur hai. Radio Fiji 2, des ki dharkan. Seema Nakasi se, my Radio Fiji 2 pasan karti hu sunne ke liye, Radio Fiji 2, des ki dharkan. I am Uncle King, singer to the town, taxi driver, they say rugby famous, they say Radio Fiji 2 famous. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dharkan. In new media, the Lenovo company says its new Yoga C930 laptop is a fine-tuned premium convertible with an updated design adding more functionality by turning its 360-degree hinge into a speaker soundbar. You'll also find a new active pen that stores and charges in the C930's body and a privacy shutter that blocks the webcam at the flip of a switch. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Hope you're doing great this evening after two delightful days and of course recovering from the sunburn if you went out swimming. Well, you had fun under the sun, that is all that matters. The sunny weather continued into today as well with cool breezes. Now taking a look in the west, warm and sunny, a great day for a dip at Saweni Beach in Lotoka. Eastwards from Pek Suva, it was slightly cooler but still sunny throughout the day. And up north, just the same great weather around the nation. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. 
For the tides, high tide at 11.23 tonight, with a low tide at 5.51 tomorrow morning. Sunrise at 6.31. For tomorrow, quite fast, but it's Friday again. How exciting, but not so exciting. That's because showers are likely. Tomorrow's temps, mostly ranging in the low 30s. And looking further on to Saturday, keep your umbrellas handy as showers will roll in. So I guess today is a break before the rain. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, should a zero tolerance policy be introduced against drivers for speeding? I think the suspension of license for three months uh, would be a much better option because uh, drivers are not taking um, warnings into consideration. Uh, no, I think fine is okay. So handling of our will, if they are good on handling, handling the will, then give it to them. If they are misusing, then uh, reduce it. I think they should be license uh, suspended and there should be a lot of uh, enforcement on those uh, laws. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, a little time travel goes a long way in helping you ring in 2019 for a second time in the same year. Recapping the main stories for tonight, police call Raina's death murder, body found in Vicinda, Nasino identified, and PM well despite fake social media news. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, will you be making a resolution for 2019? Visit our if BC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day sent in by Mike Elisova, beautiful sandy beach in the Asawas. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on the email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night. My Navneet Nan, Nambu Alumbua, as the Freni North is famous, Radio Fiji 2 is also famous. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. I like Radio Fiji 2 to listen to Radio Fiji 2. I am the country of the country of the country. I am Uncle King, Singatoka Town, the taxi driver, the country of rugby, the country of the country of Radio Fiji 2. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country.